All right, now we... Mario Kart Wii, the ultra shortcut revolution. If the first five seconds of this video aren't home far and away, the song that I love to hear from Summoning Salt. I fucking love this man. Let's go! Mario Kart Wii has some ridiculous shortcuts. Grumble Volcano, Coconut Mall. For speedrunners, they're certainly no secret. I covered many of these in a video a couple of years ago. Tricks known as ultra shortcuts. However, since then, a revolution has taken place. Pog? Since 2019, Ultra shortcuts in Mario Kart Wii Jesus have been discovered at a Christ. rate never before seen. What the fuck Many is even that? Many of them are only theoretically possible, using inputs so precise they can't normally be done. But they break the game in ways unimaginable to most. This is the story of the Ultra Shortcut Revolution. Let's go! The only shortcut I know is on this level that you have to like... You like, go up. This one as well. Yeah. The Bowser ones. I know the two Bowser ones. The old Bowser one where you jump over the lava. And then the one where you go like up into the thing. Because Aiden does those when he races. So what is an ultra shortcut? Well, naturally it's a shortcut that skips a large portion of a track. But as you'll see in a minute, there's actually a bit more to it than that. Mm. From 2008 through 2018, Courses like Mushroom Gorge, Wario's Goldmine, and DK Jungle Parkway had shortcuts discovered so players could complete them in under a minute. Mm. They were performed in a variety of ways. In Mushroom Gorge, you ride on a wall around the finish line. In Wario's Goldmine, you bounce at? off a pipe to the track above. That's kind of pog. And on DK Jungle Parkway, you fly high in the air and clip through a wall to the end of the track. Over the course of about a decade, Massive shortcuts like these were discovered at the rate of about one per year on a variety of tracks. Slowly but surely, more and more of the game's 32 courses had ultra shortcuts discovered. For years, that was the state of Mario Kart Wii. And then, in 2019, a revolution began. For a multitude of reasons, Ultra Shortcuts were discovered more rapidly than ever before. They all had to do with the game's faulty checkpoint system, and to see how it works, we're gonna look at one of the most broken tracks in Mario Kart Wii. This is Sherbert Land. This map fucked me up this as a kid. This course is a massive loop. I'm bad and at this obviously map. obviously the programmers didn't want you to skip any significant portion of it. So, they built an intricate checkpoint system into every track to try to prevent that. On screen now is the checkpoint map for Sherbert Land. All of the blue lines represent normal checkpoints, which are used to tell Lakitu where to place you if you fall off. Okay. Those can be ignored. Okay. The green lines, on the other hand, are key checkpoints. Fire. These are the ones that really matter, and you can think of them as boxes that extend all the way until the next checkpoint. The red starting line also acts as a key checkpoint. Mm. The game wants you to drive through all of these without skipping any in order to give you credit for a lap. Peepo G, the way don't it does this box. is with a counter that updates as you drive through each key checkpoint. On Sherbert Land, there's eight key checkpoints and the finish line which counts as region 0. So as long as your counter is at region 8 when you cross the finish line, you'll get credit for the lap. That seems so lazy. The game also has a fail safe to make sure you don't skip any key checkpoint regions. The only key checkpoint regions that are loaded at any time are the region you're in, the one in front of you, and if you're in the key checkpoint box itself, the region behind you is loaded too. A region has to be loaded for your counter to update to it. So, say you're here in region 1, and you try yep. to skip ahead to region 3. Okay. Well, the only other region loaded is the one in front of you, region 2. So when you drive through region 3, 
it won't be loaded and the game's counter won't update. And since you'll drive through the finish line with the counter at 1 instead of 8, the lap won't count. So skipping any large portion of the track isn't doable. Another failsafe the game has involves the finish line. If you ever go from the box right in front of the finish line to the box right behind it, the game will subtract a lap from your total. That way, you can't just go through or around the finish line to the end and complete it for a free lap. So since you couldn't skip any key checkpoints, the only possible shortcuts seem to be small corner cutters. The game's checkpoint system did its job, but it had one flaw. One major game-breaking flaw. If you start any shortcut from key checkpoint region 0, right in front of the finish line, the key checkpoint box behind you is still loaded, region 8. So you can skip a massive portion of the track, and as long as you start it in that first box, your counter can still be updated to region 8, and the lap will count. Shortcuts that abuse this specific glitch are classified as ultra shortcuts. And sure enough, Sherbertland has one that's possible. This is the Sherbertland Ultra Shortcut. I imagine this is a Wii exclusive. It involves doing a trick known as a wall clip. By backing up, using a mushroom, and doing a wheelie to get at least 5 frames of airtime and adjust your bike's rotational angle, you can run into the side of certain objects to clip high into Jesus. the air. Jesus. This has a variety of uses across the game, but back in July 2015, a player named Blaze figured out that you could wall clip off of the finish line pole and land far enough back to respawn a bit behind the finish line. Everyone who figures you shit out like that are psychopaths. Map what's happening. You start in the box in front of the finish line, then need to land in a specific spot in this checkpoint to respawn. What was going on that then, day? What was he doing that day that he thought, yeah, okay. <laughs> Since key checkpoint 8 is loaded, you need to turn around and go touch the box to update the game's counter before driving forward to the finish. A lap could be completed in under 20 seconds. For a few years, people took turns lowering the 3 lap world record, mm. and by late 2017, mm. it was a 143 by a runner named Guy. The biggest issue with the shortcut, however, was that it could only be done once per race since the act of respawning takes your mushrooms away, which are required to get the wall clip in the first place. So, if you could somehow do this ultra shortcut without respawning, then that would be huge. And it seemed like that should be possible. By angling your bike to the left more, you could make it back to the track without a respawn. But doing so would cause the lap to not count, because of yet another failsafe the game has. The 95% rule. The game actually keeps God, like, track like of how much of the course you school all over when again. You enter each checkpoint. Or at least, the game's best estimation of how much you've completed. If it ever sees you skipping more than 95% of a track from one checkpoint to the next, it won't count the following lap. Now, the game actually isn't that great at tracking this in most cases. In courses like Grumble Volcano, for instance, yeah, that, where you're clearly nuts. skipping more than 95% of the track by going on the rock, the game only registers you as skipping about 83%, so the trick works. But on Sherbert Land, since you have to cross over this checkpoint on the track, the game thinks you went the, from 0% to 97%, meaning the 95% rule was not satisfied and the lap wouldn't count. For years, the 95% rule prevented the non-respawn ultra shortcut from happening. But in May 2019, a tool-assisted speedrunner known as Swear got an idea. The game's percentage of completion updates any time you enter a checkpoint. So you could drive ahead to the next checkpoint, then re-enter the first checkpoint from further ahead, at about 2% completion. Then if you manage to wall clip and land on the track while your completion percentage updated to 97%, the 95% rule would be satisfied and the lap would count. So, drive so up a little Swear bit. got to work at creating a tool-assisted speedrun of Sherbertland. A tool-assisted speedrun, or a TAS, is a type of speedrun where the player uses tools like slowdown, save states, and frame by frame to create higher levels of gameplay than humans can normally perform. Mm. On May 21st, 2019, 
He and fellow Tassers Akari, CF, Luke, and Thomas released their 3 out of 3 Sherbert Land Tass, with one mushroom used on each lap to just barely land on the track and have the Ultra Shortcut count. A run clocking in at just 35 seconds. So the focus turned to doing this normally in real time, or RTA. On May 16th, Bryce managed to hit the no respawn version, but used two mushrooms in the process and could only do it once, True. getting a new world record of 140. Use the boost midair. Just over a month later, Taylor would improve the record to 129 by doing the two mushroom no respawn method on lap one, then using his last mushroom to do the wall clip again and land Smart. in the water for the lap skip. How the fuck did Bryce not This come same up with method that? would be improved over the following months, down to a 116 by Arthur, which is where the record stands today. As of now, nobody has hit the one mushroom no respawn lap skip in real time even once. Arthur got pretty close in October 2020, with his front tire hitting against the edge, but he couldn't make it. So given that, doing this three times in a row like the task does seems out of the question. Right now, it looks impossible. But well, why not just what practice? the future of Sherbert Land holds. And then you'll get These it. These Sherbert Land developments can be considered the first major events of the Ultra Shortcut <laughs> Revolution. Over the following several weeks in mid-2019, discoveries went dormant for a bit while players worked on improving various world records. Mm. But in July, seemingly out of nowhere, possibly the craziest day in By Mario the way, Kart everyone League uses Funky Kong because he's the fastest. Remember how I mentioned before that Ultra Shortcuts in the past had been discovered at the rate of about one per year? Well, during these 24 hours, there wasn't a new Ultra Shortcut discovered. There were three of them. Also the funkiest. Cool new song. What is this song? This song's fire. Call it a ridiculous coincidence. Call it a culmination of years of effort from the community. Sure, culmination of Whatever effort. Whatever it was, the end result was incredible. On July 11th and 12th, Wave new table Ultra Shortcuts from Patricia were Taxi. on N64 Bowser's Castle, Yoink. Shy Guy Beach, and Koopa Cape. Bowser's Castle was first, being revealed on July 11th, and it looked quite similar to the one on Sherbert Land. This shortcut was first theorized by a tasser known as CF, and successfully tasked by Luke with help from a handful of others. It began by doing a humanly impossible trick known as Rapid Fire Hop Abuse. The game needs your bike to be on the ground for at least two frames to update its rotational angle. By alternating pressing and releasing the hop button every frame, for 30 times per second, you can ensure that your bike is only on the ground for one frame at a time, so your bike's rotational angle will never update. Name of the video? This can only Shortcut be done revolution. in the tool-assisted speedrun. Somebody saw this new video. Then, once you get near this wall, you can release the rapid fire hop abuse causing the game to quickly update your rotational angle and slam your front wheel into the ground. You'll briefly fly into the air, allowing you to get over the wall next to the finish line. By then doing a wall clip, you'll fly Jesus high in the Christ. air and down into the lava. This ultra shortcut works just like the one on Sherbert Land. Okay. These checkpoints extend out a bit into the lava, so it's possible to land in them even without making it to the road. So once again, you can land out of bounds, respawn on the course, then go back to hit the last key checkpoint and finish the lap. But ultimately, even though the shortcut was similar in structure to Sherbert Land, the rapid fire hop abuse made it TAS only. It was impossible to do this humanly. The second shortcut, on the other hand, was humanly viable, but it has quite the background. The same day the N64 Bowser's Castle Ultra Shortcut was discovered, a player named Brakeson posted this gif of wall clipping off a bomb. That's fucked up. This guy's fucked up. Even if you found it that day, you wait. You wait like a week, okay? You let the guy who found the other trick have a week minimum. This is messed up. You don't just take it from him. Same day? Really? On a game like Mario Kart Wii? You're not gonna at least spread out the content a little bit. It's fucked up. Right away, CF realized the massive potential this had. If you could clip off a bomb right in front of the finish line and land somewhere back here, you would then be able to touch the last key checkpoint and get an extremely fast lap. 
The bombs in Shy Guy Beach operate on a cycle, with bombs landing and exploding at the same times in the same places each time you play. And coincidentally, That's convenient. right when the race begins, a bomb lands in front of the finish line, That's convenient. exactly where you'd want to clip off of it. So naturally, that's what the players were aiming for. But every time they tried, the bomb would explode just too soon. Luke was able to get close with the TAS, but it exploded frames too early every single time. So CF's original TAS was for the second time the bomb landed there. Makes sense. But that meant waiting for over three minutes. That ruled out any hopes of beating the three lap hold record but you could still beat the single lap record. By driving to the end of the first lap, then waiting until three minutes on the timer, you could quickly start the second lap, then wall clip off the bomb to the end of the lap, and smash the fastest lap Yeah, but that seems dumb. You sat for three and minutes. And later the same day, that's what players were doing. Justin became the first player to set a world record with the ultra shortcut with a 20 second lap. And he chose to spend his three minute wait by eating an entire pack of Oreo cookies. <laughs> I am eating with no milk, by the way. Oh, a couple cringe. weeks later, this method would be improved cringe. in a task by EJ. By starting the clip sooner, you could clip off the back of the bomb to shave a fraction of a second. Although it was more You know precise, what? I'm with Nintendo now. Don't support your video games. I'm on your side. Fuck Smash, fuck Mario Kart, fuck all the communities. This method will ultimately be brought to RTA runs as well. The current lap record is a 16.9 by Jack Glusing, one of the most bizarre looking tricks in the game. So those were the first two shortcuts, both discovered on July 11th. They both involved wall clips, flying high into the air to skip a lap. But just a short while later, the third ultra shortcut in 24 hours was discovered. Jesus Christ. And this one was the craziest of all. Welcome Again, to Koopa Cape. Wait a day. At least a day. The credit for this one goes to Blaze, being revealed in a task on July 12th. Idea, Mr. You start by going to the half pipe in front of the finish line it's all good. and tilting the nose of your bike down. Then, you start the rapid fire hop abuse to keep your back wheel in the air as you move forward. By releasing it, you will get slammed into the ground again and launched high in the air. The rapid fire hop abuse alone makes this humanly impossible, but in case it didn't, this next part would <laughs> likely take care of that too. By angling your wheel up while in the air, you can then do a wall clip and land inside the barrier while still technically being on the track. Then, you maneuver close to the finish line with extreme precision, and fall off the course. This is some when you respawn, Zelda Ocarina of Time you're shit. behind the finish line and can finish the lap. As this trick stands right now, it's certainly not humanly viable. Getting across this gap seems to be impossible without rapid fire hop abuse, so until a way around that is figured out, no human will ever perform this outside of a task. Enter Ludwig. So, those were the three Ultra Shortcuts discovered in rapid succession. Including the No Respawn Shortcut on Sherbert Land, <laughs> that made it four Ultra imagine, Shortcuts discovered. Imagine one day you're watching a Summoning Salt video, and it, it is me. And I did come out correct, impressively doing things. If you pull that off, I'll give you your own video. How about we strike an agreement? What if I hit 1,200 rating on my chess account? Imagine. Super GMs have dominated the game of chess. But one man hit a third of their rating. The impressive thing? It only took him two and a half years. Okay, I recorded the intro for you. I feel like, you know, probably should pay me for this. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind a cut. Four ultra shortcuts discovered in 2019. Never before had the I'm game shivering. seen a period of discovery the shakes, like bro. this. There had been years in the past with multiple ultra shortcuts found, but never had there been four separate ones. The next several months of 2019 came and went without any new discoveries, mm. calming the scene for a little while. Also no COVID. And then came 2020. COVID. 
shit. These odd 2019 may have been an incredible year for Mario Kart Wii, but 2020 really was the year of the Ultra Shortcut. There's a and high it, correlation between Mario Kart success and the COVID-19 spread of the virus. All started just nine days in Follow the on lines. N64 Mario Raceway. This one has to do with the wall in the center of the course. Players knew for a while that if they could somehow get inside of it, they might be able to maneuver around in it to get a lap skip. Jesus. Issue was, it has a massive invisible wall that extends upward in the sky. Any attempts to get up inside of it would be blocked by this wall. But in early January 2020, a player named Jaden pointed out that a section of this wall by the mushroom extended out past the wall, and the bottom here has no hit detection. Saved. So if you could somehow go through this section of the invisible wall, you could land inside to set up a lap skip. And a player named Snoop figured out how to do that in a task. This looks like an Odyssey wall skip. clipping off of this mushroom. From there, she then had to get to the end of the lap. You essentially have to go around the rest of the course while in the wall, but still touching the road. It seems so Doing fucking this slow. this is beyond precise. You have an incredibly tight space to work with. There's a point midway through where you have to turn more than 90 degrees to the left, and a player named Charlie figured out that to turn that far, you have to go extremely slowly and do a standstill mini turbo while in the air. This tedious movement continued for a while, but Snoop eventually got to the end of the lap. Snoop, no! She then backed across the finish line, used a mushroom, and fell off the track. Then respawned and drove to the end for a 19 second lap. Ooh! This incredibly precise portion of the cool. shortcut was developed by Jellopuff. You have to go from this box right in front of the finish line, to this box back <laughs> here. Someone in chat says, just play the fucking game? <laughs> <laughs> without touching this box between, or the lap won't count. It requires a perfect angle, but it can be done. This obviously can only be used for lap runs. The Nintendo operatives the have infiltrated chat. And the best known task is a 16 second lap, published by EJ but with contributions from a plethora of players. But here's the crazy part. Technically nothing here is humanly impossible. There's no rapid fire hop abuse, and that wall clip at the start can be done. Even the movement inside the wall, as insanely precise as it is, technically none of those moves are strictly humanly impossible. Mm -hmm. So, will it ever be done? Well, Snoop did. Conventional speedrunning logic says that anything theoretically possible will be done eventually, but it's hard to say if that applies here. Most in the Mario Kart Wii community don't see it as a humanly possible trick even though none of the moves themselves are technically oh, impossible. Pass. Right now, it just seems a Tass little bit out goaded. of reach. The next shortcut, on the other hand, is absolutely out of reach. This is Dry Dry Ruins. The Aemon skip. I swear to God, my roommate Aemon can do this. He's goaded. Let's start by looking at the checkpoint map. As with most of these shortcuts, the goal is simple. You go from the box in front of the finish line I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna tag you there for copyright infringement, okay? Um, the goal is simple, too close. We're gonna have some beef here. You'll hear from my people. Out around the finish line and out of bounds, then respawn, turn to hit the last key checkpoint, and drive forward to finish the lap. The key to doing that is getting around the finish line. But here's the problem: around the course is a massive invisible wall, highlighted here in blue. Yeah. You can't get around the finish line checkpoint without getting past this wall. It's a big wall. And it just goes up and up. So that was the big challenge. Figure out a way to get past the invisible wall. I like how Blaze it's a challenge took it upon not a himself dead end. to solve it. There wasn't a way to go through the wall, but Blaze had another idea. He was going to try to go over it. <laughs> and. <laughs> this is just a door of the explorer. I swear to God, I've seen the same scene in Door of the Explorer. Enter the super grind. Can't go around the wall. Can't go under the wall. That's right. Go over the wall. A super grind is a form of rapid fire hop abuse. You do yeah, the normal hop inputs on every other frame, 
but add in alternating between neutral and a direction on the control stick. This causes your horizontal speed to build up as well as changing your bike's rotational angle, so when you eject off the ramp, you get sent high in the air. By then doing a wall clip off of the rock, she did do that, you go saw. even higher and can eventually make it up over the invisible wall and out of bounds. The rapid fire hop abuse makes this impossible to do humanly, Okay. but on January 16th, Blaze managed to get a 27 second lap in a TAS. That made it two ultra shortcuts discovered in January 2020. Just month. one month into the year, and two more tracks were already broken. In one month, the discoveries COVID. did slow down for a few months after this, as February and March came and went without any new ultra shortcuts. But in April, the third ultra shortcut of 2020 was revealed, and this one had been in development for a long time. This is Bowser Castle 3. You got some bangers, man. I'll give you that. To start, we have to go back to July 2019, when Justin came up with a rough idea for an ultra shortcut that would barely save any time. At the end of the lap, you could hop up on the wall and wall clip to cut this corner of the track. Issue was, you'd be skipping the second to last key checkpoint. Need that. Your tracker would be at 5, then wouldn't update to 6, and since region 7 isn't loaded, the lap wouldn't count. But luckily, Justin had a way around that, skipping the first key checkpoint too. This might seem counterintuitive, oh. but think about how the checkpoint system works. Right. By skipping region, skipping one, region 1, the game thinks the you're game still thinks in you're region, region 0, zero. meaning so region the last region is loaded, is too. loaded too. So, skipping region 6 right. is inconsequential, since the only other region loaded is region 7, and the counter seven. updates Close. once you get there, allowing for a successful lap. This same idea of skipping the first checkpoint to allow for a later skip was already used on Maple Treeway, so it wasn't a new concept. No, no one Justin's did any of these idea skips. For skipping no one did any of these skips in the Mario Kart Wii World Championship that we had on our stream. They did, they did like 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 a shortcut from like fucking here to here or some shit. The first checkpoint involved wall clipping off the finish line pole, but that ultimately wouldn't end up working. The angle you would need to approach the pole wasn't viable for a wall clip, so that idea was ruled out. I don't even think you're allowed to ultra shortcut, probably, in competitive Mario Kart Wii. The next day, Benny theorized another method. It was actually possible to wall clip off of certain blocks. You can very precisely fall off the side of these blocks, Bands, then do yeah. a wall clip off of them to get launched far forward. And as I mean, imagine if you could do it. Like, how degenerate would that be? If there was a viable ultra skip, and then people were just at the start, just trying them, <laughs> you know? Like, just trying to fucking grind up the pole or whatever. It'd be dumb as fuck. It would be, it'd be, it'd be shit. It'd be shit. As Snoop figured out, this method was viable, but only if you use the spear. It'd be hype if they got the it the game. one time, yeah. Even with the second clip later, the lap was still slower than the non-shortcut record, since the spear's poor drift cost too much time. The non-shortcut task to beat was 36.656. If someone could get a time under that, then this would officially be a new ultra shortcut. Esteloy62 and Kirio would later prove that the first skip was possible with the Flame Runner, Pog. the bike typically best for getting fast times. That opened the door to maybe turning it into an official ultra shortcut, but when Akari and Monster lowered the non-shortcut task down by half a second in October, that put a bit of a damper on things. Get fucked. But a few months later, a group of tassers came back. They felt that if they could just find a bit of time to save, they could make this ultra shortcut a reality. So they got to work. The time to beat was 35. Point nine three six. So all you have to do is beat the time that's not using a shortcut to make an ultra shortcut. Isn't that so wobbly though? Of a definition? Because then what if they just shorten the time afterwards? Like if the ultra shortcut's faster, but then the actual path gets faster than that, you don't unlabel it in ultra shortcut. 
You unlabel it? That seems... That seems wobbly. On April 26th, the final task was published. A 35.743. Let's go! Just ahead of the non-shortcut lap record. EJ was technically the first person to beat the non-shortcut task, after finding the faster way to turn for the second <laughs> skip, but the final product had contributions from Esteloy. Dude, just what, what does the mom do when she walks in? Honey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm trying to save um, like 0.2 seconds on the current time for the Mario Kart. So, okay, first of all, you know Mario Kart? So we're playing the old one. So, um... Curio, Malio, Marth, Monster, Rocky, and Snoop. A the amount that goes into explaining many that. many members in the community culminating in a new ultra shortcut by the slimmest of margins, the third of 2020. Melee now, is of these three pretty bad as well, yeah, humanly, as explanation. But just seeing ways that a task could break courses was amazing. Still though, there wasn't anything new where you could pick up a controller and perform it. That's what the discoveries of 2020 had been missing. But in July, an interesting development was My made birthday. to an old one. Waluigi Stadium had an ultra shortcut from back in 2015. Okay. You did a massive jump up high to skip the first key checkpoint, then performed rapid fire hop abuse to clip through a zipper and skip part of the course. That's pog. It was an impressive shortcut. Yeah. But the rapid fire hop abuse made it Makes task it impossible. Only. End of story. Right? I don't use it. Well, that. for years, players have been working oh. to make the shortcut humanly possible. One of the earliest efforts was from a player named Sam F. His idea was to jump in the air, hit off the top of the finish line banner, and pass through an invisible wall to later in the track. Okay. This finish line banner is technically a horizontal wall, and whenever your bike contacts one, it's temporarily able to pass through all other walls. Okay. Although Sam couldn't make it to the track with his method, using the banner for the invisible wall would be explored years later. In January 2020, Justin and Benny came up with a variant of the original task method. You'd do a mini turbo for speed, reach the top of the banner, and use it to clip through the invisible wall, all without using a mushroom. Then, upon reaching the track, rather than doing the rapid fire hop of use to clip through the zipper, you'd do this. Oh, that was so swag! Believe it or not, this second part of the shortcut was viable. It was the shroomless banner clip at the start that the community was unsure that of. That camera angle is Even ahead of its precision time. precision of a task, Years ahead of its time. You barely have enough speed to make it to the track. So this version was put on the back burner. But then, half a year later, Jellopuff proved that Sam's original method was possible to do in real oh, time. Oh boo, go back to the old one. The key was using the bullet bike and using a task to perfect the angle and drift. Once again, nobody knew for sure if this was too precise to do humanly, but the inputs themselves weren't impossible. Players tried to do this for a few days, but ultimately nobody was able to hit it. Mm. Back to the drawing board. <laughs> Until EJ days, came out with this method five days later. Okay. Whoa. It was similar what to Justin and Benny's Sam method, heck? but had much more leeway. You would use a mushroom to make it up to the banner, then clip to the left and have your front tire hit the dirt. By then hopping, your bike will bounce to the right, just enough to make it to the course. You could then turn around, hit the last key checkpoint, and finish the lap. Right away, people figured this would be humanly possible. The question was, who would pull it off first? Justin. Well, just three days later, oh, fuck, that I question was answered. I thought he was about The player's to name was Logan. God damn it. And he it. managed to time the hop perfectly and land out of bounds to get a 148 three lap record. That's a trash time, Logan. This was effectively the same as the task version, but he had to waste some time getting picked up rather than landing right back on the course. This record would eventually be lowered to 143 by not having to respawn. Okay. But there's still potential to take quite a bit of time off of it. It's possible to do this shortcut three times in a race, 
using one mushroom per lap. But given the difficulty of doing this just once, it's a bit of a long shot. Yeah. There's also been attempts to hit Sam's original method, which would be faster, but nobody's been able to yet. If either of those two tricks are hit, Waluigi Stadium's record could still be crushed. Holy! But as it turns out, the improvements to old strategies weren't done. Let's take a look at Ghost Valley 2. Every Logan in chat punching This one the air. is pretty small, <laughs> but looks impressive. I hate this map. The original Ghost Valley 2 shortcut was discovered in 2009 this and involved blows. doing a wall clip off the finish oh. line pole to skip further in the track. But six years later, this shortcut would be improved by, of course, none other than Blaze. There's a turn of After this map landing that fucks from the first me every wall time. Clip, you could turn around and do a second one off of these blocks. Wait, this is not the- Skipping to the end of the lap. This is not the map with the, the house of The checkpoint map is shows it? how this works. By leaving from the finish line box, the game still thinks you're in region zero. So skipping to later in the track is no issue. As long as you go back to hit the last key checkpoint, I always slam the, wall the game thinks one. you drove the lap normally and counts it. Banshee board The only issue with this shortcut me. was that it only saved a fraction of a second, since you used all your mushrooms and couldn't do a normal wall this clip some SNES on the other laps. Shit, I imagine. Even though the second part was humanly possible, doing it fast enough to save time was tough. For years, nobody was able to do it in a three lap record. Then eight but finally, in October 2020, Logan did it. Damn it, Logan. Beating the old record by just a tenth of a second. Is Logan the goat of Mario and Kart? And to this day, he sounds familiar. nobody else has been able to pull off both wall clips in a world record speed run. So that makes five ultra shortcuts or ultra shortcut improvements pulled off in 2020. These shortcuts have a wide Logan range of human different. viability. Some are tricks humans can regularly perform, like Shy Guy Beach or Ghost Valley 2. Others will never be pulled off in their current state. Courses like Dry Dry Ruins have tricks that make them impossible. One of those TAS-only shortcuts was N64 Bowser's Castle. Mm. I mentioned before how this trick involved rapid fire hop abuse to get over the wall. Alternating tapping the hop button on every other frame 30 times per second I do that. isn't humanly possible. Well, so any trick that requires mash. this can't be done outside of a TAS. But remember what I said before? The rapid fire hop abuse made it TAS only. It was impossible <laughs> to do this humanly. <laughs> was impossible. Did you quote yourself in your own video from the same video? I've never seen that. The balls to quote yourself from your own video. Possible. Keyword was. Hey, this is classic. What's the term in writing? No, untrustworthy narrator what's the term Sh shite not shite narrator uh, lying narrator something like that in November unreliable narrator 2020 Tasser CF came back to take another look at N64 Bowser's castle looking for a way to bypass the rapid fire hop abuse and sure enough he found a way to make the ultra shortcut humanly possible this is the barrel roll Summoning salt using more of my English degree than I ever have. This was a trick discovered the, the same year fuck? the game came out, back in 2008, but wasn't fully explored until many years later. You have to go up on a wall, yeah. then do a wheelie while you slowly fall over the edge. If done properly, your bike then enters a state where the game won't try to correct the bike's rotation as long as you stay at a low speed. Then, while in the barrel roll state, you can line yourself up with the finish line pole. By using a mushroom, the game will try to quickly correct your rotational angle. And just like with rapid fire hop Wheel abuse, down. this causes your bike to snap back to normal, allowing you to go over the wall and clip off the finish line pole. You need two boosts? The end result is exactly the same as with rapid fire hop abuse. Difference is, now you don't need to button mash like a TAS. I could do but that. doing this trick was still unbelievably precise. You needed to get the correct bounce, be lined up perfectly with the pole, then get a big enough clip to make it all the way to the checkpoint. Okay. Three variables that, despite technically all being possible, needed a miracle to all line up in the same run. Who was crazy enough to try to get all of that? Logan. The answer, of course, was Logan. This was the same guy who first pulled Goated. off the Waluigi Stadium shortcut outside Goated. of the TAS. 
and who first got the double wall clip on Ghost Valley Let's 2. Let's go, Logan! He had also gotten dozens of other records over the course of a few years, so he certainly had the skill needed to do this. But this was one of the hardest tricks ever discovered in Mario Kart Wii. These were his attempts in the winter of 2020. No way. No way. No way. Come on. Give it to me. No. I Actually, no way. I crossed backwards. <laughs> I don't think they care about shortcuts. We. I think we just did it. I think we just did it. Oh, no. How? No! Dude's got no game sense. I thought that was it. <laughs> what? No. One frame? Turn out on this. I need a new track. Never mind. Not it. No, oh, come on. Please. One time. Oh. See, I have game sense. I see these things. Yeah, I can't do them, but I see them. Come on. Yep. <laughs> Logan's long grind had finally paid off. The vision. You could see the top 10 times in the world at the start of his record video. Everyone had a low 231 or 230, except for Logan. He was alone with a 220. A full 10 seconds ahead of the rest. That's insane. Thanks to the ultra shortcut. To this day, nobody else has been able to pull it off. Well, let's go, Logan! As more time has passed, more old ultra shortcuts thought to be impossible have had new methods discovered. Koopa Cape is an example of this. Recently, Justin found a way to implement a barrel oh, roll that's to do kind a wall clip and get out of bounds without needing to do rapid fire hop. Oh, that's insane. This setup would later be improved by EJ. But despite this, it's still unclear if it will ever be executed outside of its ass. The precision needed is beyond nearly every other ultra shortcut in the game. And although players have tried, nobody has come close to hitting it yet. But well, you'll get a part three if you do. Now, there's still one more course we have to talk about. And you probably know which one it is. Yep. Rainbow Ride. This is Rainbow Road. Fuck! This shortcut's legacy is unrivaled. Rainbow Road's Ultra Shortcut is a trick that perfectly exemplifies the community's effort. And this story around it I is choked. simply incredible. It all started back in March 2016. I was thinking when Rainbow Tasser, fucking SOA ride from Mario. The video to YouTube. 64. Rainbow Road. New Ultra Shortcut. This video was a task where Esteloy went forward then turned around in front of the railing. This one's insane. She then got some speed and hopped, barely balancing on the outside of the railing. Yeah. By using a mushroom and performing a spin drift, where you drift to the right while holding left, she managed to spin far to the right while getting a lot of air time to move further ahead. She then angled the nose of the bike down to get a nose dive. Sure. Causing a big bounce that threw her over the edge. Finally, once she was halfway to the other side, she used a mushroom for speed and held back on the controller to fall slower. She made it across and had just cut out almost the entire lap. Now, these inputs on their own are super tough, okay. but the locations of the checkpoints means this is even more precise than it looks. When you move forward to go behind the railing, you leave key checkpoint zero and enter key checkpoint one. However, you need to ultimately leave the track from region 0 for the lap to count. So one of the hardest parts was making it back far enough to nick the corner of region 0 before flying off the edge. But if you managed to pull that off, so all you needed you to do was drive forward through the last key checkpoint and the lap would count. 
chaining all of these inputs together was beyond precise. For years, nobody made any real progress on pulling. Okay, to everyone who asked, and I, a couple of people did, do the do you think the developers knew this would happen? Fuck no, dude. Are you out of your goddamn mind? It's overworked company in Japan that probably had to turn this around in like fucking 18 months or something on like goddamn no salary. That's like saying, Ludwig, did you know when you created the Reddit that you would have a not friend joke in there every day in the month of January and February? I'd be like, no, what the fuck does that even mean? I off that's the only shortcut. On the task side of things, however, there was one possible improvement. See, Esteloy used all three of her mushrooms to make it across the track. Yeah. And shortly after, it was discovered that you really only needed to use two of them. Okay. One right before the spin drift, and one to provide speed to make it to the other side. Unfortunately, even using just two mushrooms meant you could only do this shortcut once, once per, race, per race, since you just have one mushroom left over. Good point. But what about taking it a step further? What about doing this shortcut with just one mushroom? You well, if that possible. was possible, that would mean you could do the shortcut three times. But you said once it wasn't possible. Lap, to finish the race in under a minute. For years, it seemed out of the question. But in late 2020, Tasser started taking a closer look at it. On November 21st, CF made a task that used one mushroom before the spin drift then just barely made it to the track without using a second one. He did it. Oh, that is nuts, though. Admittedly, that's a bit nuts. But the lap didn't count. The reason why was because he didn't go far enough back to enter Region Zero. This step was much harder than it looked. Going far enough back involves delaying when you launch off the edge as long as possible, which means your mushroom will run out faster. CF used the Quacker to help him, since it gave better bounces at the cost of a slower speed, but still wasn't able to make it far enough back. The Quacker. What this run did do, however, was inspire Malio to start attempts of his own. Malio is a well-known tasser of Paper Mario, Mario Kart Wii, and various other games. In late December 2020, he turned his attention to Rainbow Road, trying to become the first player to create a one mushroom task of the Ultra Shortcut. He didn't know if it was possible, so all he could do was sit down with the task and try over and over. That's all we can do in this world. Haha! <laughs> Bog, 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 oh my bog. god, this might actually happen. Holy... Holy fuck, that's so close. This is happening. Tassing is basically just me p playing fucking bridge building game. That's what tassing is. It's just like guessing and checking and praying what you do works a little better. This is happening. This is happening. Poly bridge, yeah. <laughs> Hello, summoning salt. How are you? All right, now I have to make it. Hello there. No way he made it with you in chat. No fucking way. <gasps> On December 28th, 2020, Malio proved that the one mushroom ultra shortcut was possible. Were you in chat? Rainbow Road's Ultra Shortcut could now be done on each lap. The course is done. Mario Kart Wii did its best to make players drive normally, but thanks to the efforts of so many in the community, it was overcome. Rainbow Road has been fully broken. You left for five minutes and that's when they got it? Are you shitting me?
Oh my god, dude. <laughs> that sucks. But what about on the non-task side of things? Hey, this three history believes the storytellers. We'll just lie. Fuck them. Three out of three one mushroom method is considered 100% humanly impossible. Partly because of its precision, but partly because Malio briefly did rapid fire hop abuse as well. That rules out any human ever performing the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut three times in a race. Sag. And beating the course in under a minute. Yeah, I'm, guys, I would be the worst summoning salt ever. Instead of Logan, I'd be like, yeah, it was my roommate Slime. And what the fuck are they gonna know? Hey, all right, there'll be a little bit of uproar, but how many people are playing Mario Kart Wii? Let's keep it a buck. It ain't 500,000 in a day. At least for now. <laughs> but what about the normal Ultra Shortcut? Well, after Esteloy discovered it, this trick was assumed to be humanly impossible. Community members proclaimed that it would never be done, because the precision was way beyond other Ultra Shortcuts. Each step of the trick had its own set of insanely precise inputs that would need to be performed. For years after its discovery, few serious attempts were made at landing it. It's just so weird to me to ever recommend to not try. I mean, might as well try it, lab it. But as more and more of these other incredibly difficult and precise ultra shortcuts were hit, Rainbow Road's legacy just grew bigger and bigger. It became the holy grail of Mario Kart Wii shortcuts. So, by 2018, the quest for the Rainbow Road ultra shortcut began. One of the it's just that innovations. Sorry for pausing continuously, but. Innovations aren't usually like out of the blue and then immediately implemented. They're usually discovered and then it takes a long time to implement them because of years of it won't work like melee, like shield dropping, you know, or 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 other techniques that I can't think of quickly. One of the first serious contenders was King Alex, a Just player quit. with a long career who's held numerous records over the years. He posted a video in August 2018 of some of his closest attempts. There were some nice runs, but they all either didn't have enough rotation or had too small of a bounce. They all ended in him falling well short of the track. In 2019, he did more attempts. This time, the closest ones died because he hit the out of bounds planes. These were close to reaching the road, but once he hit the plane, all of them stopped dead in their tracks. Yeah. Still, these runs looked close enough to the task that some serious excitement was brewing in the community. You also get three mushrooms, By late right? 2019, that helps. more players were trying. In November, a player named Taylor had probably the closest you're only going call for so one. far, making it really close to the track. Oh, but ultimately, Taylor too fell short. In April 2020, esteemed world record holder Justin had an attempt that looked extremely close. But he hadn't gone far enough back to hit region oh, zero. That looks so juice. four years after the ultra shortcut was discovered, even though there had been somewhat close calls, players still weren't quite doing Logan? all they needed to do to hit it. Why do I hear boss music? But in November 2020, players would get some help when CF released his task with the quacker. I mentioned before how this helped get a three out of three task since the quacker gives bigger bounces, but this improvement would also help with the normal shortcut. A bigger bounce meant there was a higher chance of making it to the road, which did help a bit. So now, there was new life for the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut. More players than ever before were going for it, each of them wanting to be the one that would go down in history as the first to pull off the most legendary shortcut in Mario Kart Wii. And on December 6th, 2020, Logan. Arthur did this. Who the fuck is... But the lap didn't count. Oh. He had just missed going back far enough to reach region zero. A YouTuber named Windbag4 posted a demonstration <laughs> that had a green line to represent where Arthur needed to go for the lap to count. As you can see, he barely missed nicking it. Yeah, that's tough. That's tough. 
using it, so the checkpoint didn't update. Sag. This tiny distance was how close Arthur came to oh, making history. My bad, you were gonna do it the for me. very next day. A player named Core became the second person to cross the gap of Rainbow Road. Oh, but it's coming! But he too didn't go far enough back. It's coming. It seems that he was a few pixels closer than Arthur to hitting Region Zero, but he still didn't reach it. Show the it. green line. That was two players in Never the mind, same okay. week who made it across the gap, but just couldn't get the lap to count. And a short while later, a third player made it across. Logan. Happy with sugar. God damn it. He too reached the other side of the road, but wasn't far enough back to get the lap skip. And unlike Arthur and Kor, Sugar would go on to repeat this feat five more times, leaving him with half a dozen skips that didn't count the lap. Oh, that'd be <laughs> yeah, y'all see that? <laughs> it's number six. It's not a not a lap count. Don't get too excited. That was the real hard part of this ultra shortcut. Making it across the gap was tough, but doing it from region zero? That was another story. True. Despite all of these close calls, none of them were able to get the lap to count. Oh. Weeks passed, 2021 began, and still nobody had pulled it off. At this point, the Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut had stood the test of time for five years. Thousands of attempts from dozens of different players. In my first Mario Kart Wii video, I made a sincere statement. The Rainbow Road Ultra Shortcut would one day be pulled off. The only question was, who was going to be the author? Mm. Well, turns out, I was pretty close. Oh. <laughs> okay. Good one, dude. Good one. <laughs> Great cross dissolve. He's watching Logan's stream in the background. Logan's had enough fame today. Oh my god. Oh my god, guys. Keep oh, he's French. Arthur. That, guys. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Pose jump, pose jump. Wait, guys, I did, it, I did 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 it. I love French people so much. Let's fucking go! If you enjoyed, it would mean a lot to me if you could share the video with one to two other people. It goes a long way on YouTube. Also, the pages for those who helped me make this are in a pinned comment, so check them out if you're interested. Thanks. Later. Good video! That went by fast, huh? Hey, chat. Yeah, thank you, Effect. Blow it up one time for the one. Once more in chat for the boys. I'm going to share it with my I'm going to share it with my friends. It's time to share with my friends. Logan deserved it. I mean, Logan's already a goat. He has a bunch of ultra world records, shortcuts, whatever. You don't need them all, all right? Thanos, you can chill. We can give it to Arthur, Rainbow Road. <laughs>